Hey everyone, welcome to Area 616. This morning, Sony released the third official trailer for Venom, which, from what I've heard, is the same trailer shown at this year's San Diego Comic Con not too long ago. You may remember when I was breaking down the second trailer a while back, my biggest complaint about it was that the movie in general just looked very generic, and there wasn't much that made it stand out. Well, having watched the third and most likely final trailer for Venom, I can say that while the plot still looks pretty run-of-the-mill to me, there's a whole lot more to like in this trailer. So today I'm going to break down the Venom trailer, going over some of the new character and plot reveals that we see in it, combining that with some of the information we've learned at Venom's San Diego Comic Con panel, and of course some speculation on my part. Now the first thing I want to say is not so much an observation as it is a PSA. Dear Sony, Warner Brothers, Paramount, all of the major film studios except, thankfully, Disney. You know that five second thing you do at the beginning of all of your trailers? Can you not? Like, I get that you're trying to advertise it to those who just want to skip it after five seconds. But for the normal people who are just watching the trailer, it's very annoying when it just blasts loud noises and spoils the best moments of the trailer at you five seconds and then starts it. So guys, how about we not do that? But in any event, the trailer does offer some insight into the plot of this movie. It's clear that Eddie is going to break into the Life Foundation after some investigation and that's where the symbiote attaches to him. We've now learned that Eddie is a bit of a failure as a reporter. Some past case didn't end well for him, which ended up costing him his reputation. So in Venom, he's really desperate to regain that, which is probably why he goes to such extensive lengths to expose the Life Foundation. But anyway, in the first couple of seconds, we see two notable things. This woman, who I'm guessing is Donna Diego, aka Scream, and then the symbiote, which is a bright yellow color. That is actually the same symbiote that belongs to Scream herself, and I'm actually really happy to see that they're keeping a lot of the color of the individual symbiotes. Otherwise, they'd all end up looking pretty similar, which might make it hard to tell them apart when they're fighting. But one thing that this trailer really highlights is what it's like for Eddie to have been taken by Venom. They really portray it more as a possession than anything, which I really like. One of the things that's always fascinated me about Venom, and this goes for characters like Ghost Rider as well, is that what gives a person their power is a living thing with its own desires. So while they may be able to reach middle ground with it, oftentimes they're just along for the ride, which brings up an interesting moral question. Could they stop it even if they wanted to? It'll be interesting to see that play out on screen. As for Venom himself, we see a lot more of him here, and I am continuing to love it. They really nailed him visually, everything from his head to his tongue to... Even the shape of his feet is exactly what Venom should look like. The only notable difference from the comics is that he doesn't have the big spider logo on his chest, but I'm okay with that. I mean, it just wouldn't make sense for it to be there if the symbiote hadn't previously attached itself to Peter Parker. So if they really aren't going to connect this to Spider-Man, I'm glad they're willing to be consistent about it. Also, I love how they're portraying Venom's personality. It's very accurate to the comics. The way he talks about eating people, it's something that just feels a lot like Venom. Eyes, lungs, pancreas, so many snacks, so little time. Really, anything about Venom himself, I'm very happy with. They did confirm at the San Diego Comic Con that this isn't in the MCU, which honestly makes me sad that the most visually perfect version of Venom will also be the one that may never meet Spider-Man. But what can you do? In any event, as I said earlier, the story has the potential to be a bit boring and by the numbers, but I'm hoping that they can do some cool stuff with it. One way I could see them managing that is by allowing Eddie to do some real investigative work, even after Venom arrives into the picture. You know, give him something to track down or uncover. Could make it interesting. Now, this shot right here makes me very curious. This appears to be Eddie's symbiote, and I think it's getting hit with sparks or something, which of course, symbiotes have weaknesses towards sound and fire. But what's really interesting to me is what's behind Venom. 
some kind of ship. This could take place towards the beginning when the Life Foundation uh, finds whatever ship the symbiotes came to Earth on, but I really think that that is Eddie inside the symbiote. So I'm thinking this is during the climax. My guess is the villain of the movie, Carlton Drake, I'll talk more about him in just a bit, wants to either get more symbiotes or maybe wants to spread symbiotes across the Earth to all of humanity. Both of those plans involve this spaceship in some way, so that's what Venom is here to stop. But that leads me to Dr. Drake himself. Previously, we thought he was just going to be a science-y type of bad guy, but it turns out he will get his hands dirty himself as Riot, aka this guy, who will be the main threat towards Venom here. I always knew Riot was in this, I just didn't know that A, it would be Carlton Drake inside, and B, he'd be the main villain of the movie. It's a very cool choice, and I'm really pleased with Riot visually. I love that they kept the giant hand axe things. Those are so great, and I like that he's pretty easy to tell apart from Venom visually. But now we reach the point in the trailer with this scene where Venom apparently partially eats this guy in the convenience store. Now this scene brings up two questions in my mind. What is Eddie thinking when Venom eats people? I'm sure the comics must have explored this at some point, so if there's a Venom fan watching this who has the answer to that, I'd love to know. Because I just, I don't know, I mean, does he know what's happening? Is he okay with that? But my main question is whether or not this movie is rated R, because it's very hard to tell. This scene in particular could be very violent, but they could also edit it so that it's just not. And the way it plays out in the trailer, it just doesn't feel like it was super violent in the movie. So, I just don't know. Venom isn't a character that needs to be R-rated like Deadpool, but he is like Wolverine in the sense that, with no restrictions, he can really shine. But Tom Hardy did talk a lot at the San Diego Comic Con about how his son loves Venom and he wants to make a movie that he could watch, so... Yeah, I don't know. In any event, overall, I like this trailer a lot more than the previous two. It's much more distinctly Venom. Based off of this, I feel like this movie won't be great necessarily, but it will be entertaining, at the very least. Better than nothing. And the director and Tom Hardy did mention a lot at the San Diego Comic Con that they wanted their Venom to meet Spider-Man one day, so maybe Sony will change their mind and integrate this into the MCU. I mean, honestly, there's no reason not to. But in any event, I'd love to know what you guys think of all of this. Do you like Venom and Riot's designs? What do you think the Life Foundation is up to? Let me know all of your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Guys, you do not want to do this, trust me. Giant leaps will always come at a cost. There's a place where lovers go to cry their troubles.